this is how we're going to begin. So I want you to face the op, rather than facing the front edge of your mat, I actually want you to go down and face the long edge of your mat like this. And I know for some of you sitting on your feet, Kristen, this isn't great. So you could just, you could modify and go onto your back and just do a normal Supta Baddha Konasana, but feet together, knees together if you, if you can. And then you're just gonna slide your arms, even if you have the floor in front of you, it's fine with a tight um, knees and feet together into a child's pose. If your head is really far from the ground, you can just place a block or a pillow underneath. If having the arms forward this morning doesn't feel good for you, you can just slide them back, kind of more of a reclined child's pose. But just try it with your feet, the tops of the feet down on the mat, your feet together, your knees together. And if it doesn't work for you, of course, you just find something that you can just kind of restore yourself for the next few breaths. We will not be here for long, as you know. I always say rest is for when you sleep at night. So let's just breathe together. Perfect. So the goal of this morning's practice is just to move our energy. And sometimes it's not about going all out. Sometimes it's more about restoring our energy level. So almost visualize your breath, like from your toes to your heels, to your tailbone, to your knees, through the base of your skull and all the way through your fingertips. Just let, let a lot of energy run back and forth. Ujjayi breath, feel the air move through the back of the throat. Inhale through your nose, ideally exhale through your nose. Good, start to push yourself up. So what's gonna happen here is just move your block. You can have, if you have two, one to the front, one to the back. You're gonna separate your feet wide, stay facing the same direction. Feet are gonna go wide. You can pigeon toe your toes in a little. Um, it may feel better for you. Bend your knees a lot. Clasp your hands behind your back and just fold. If this doesn't feel good for you, I will show a modification. Place the blocks up super high. Nance, if the back feels a little stiff, and you can just bend down this way, bring the floor up a little closer. If your head is touching the ground, take a little bit of a tighter stance. Good. And just keep your knees really bent. Like almost think about your stomach resting on your thighs and then moving your hips up off your body so your weight can just move forward. And having the hands bound like this, once again, doesn't work for you. Just have the hands resting on the ground. And visualize the breath again. So from the ground, moving all the way up the backs of the legs, through the tailbone, and then all the way back down through the crown of the head. And try not to resist the feeling, but embrace it. Embrace it. And if you need to back out, you back out. However your hands are bound, uh, bound, just kind of switch it. So opposite baby finger, opposite thumb. And then go down again into it a little deeper if you can or back out of it if you're going the opposite. Feel the weight into the balls of your feet. See if you can fire up your arches of your feet so you're not dumping all the weight down and kind of to the center. Use the outer blades of your feet. Stay with the breath here. Stay with the feeling just a little longer. Let the stomach drop. And so for a lot of us, hanging like this can be, you know, difficult. But this really is great for the central nervous system, calming ourselves from fight or flight. Essentially, this is an inversion, changing our mood and our energy level. Let the hands drop down to the ground. Come to the fingertips, long spine, and pause. Yeah. Let the shoulders slide down the back. Walk your hands over to the right foot. Pivot your right foot to the front skinny edge of your mat. Activate your back left leg so you're in a low lunge. Utilize your block right here if you need it. Make sure your feet are about hips width distance. Left hand down, peel the right arm open. You're gonna go into an easy twist. So modify is always good. Use a block to bring the floor up to you. Activate your back leg. Squeeze your outer right hip in. And stack the two shoulders the best that you can. If your right arm feels a little jammed up this morning, just have your hand on the flat part of your back and do less. Rather than feeling like you're leaning back, like rather than me leaning towards you, 
I'm actually gonna draw my torso a little closer to the front of my right thigh. And then I'm twisting from above my belly button as I look up. Drive the feet more into the mat. Look down, right hand comes to the floor. Keep your right foot where it is. Pivot your left foot into a warrior two position. Left foot goes into a warrior two position, is angled. Right arm will rest on the top of your right thigh. Left arm will stretch straight up, so this is a supported side angle. Left arm can slide forward if you want more. Hand can also be on your hip. Supported side angle, we're not coming up right here. Grip your right hip in. Work out your stance. Make sure the stance is long enough and wide enough so you can sit into your right thigh and really get the hip to open. Take your bottom right ribs and turn them towards the sky. Anchor your left foot, press firm through it. And then slide the left arm a little bit more forward up towards the ceiling or wrap it a little more forward towards the front edge of your mat. Stay with this. Lighten the load, as I like to call it. Right arm is not just dumping down. It's light, it's soft, it's not holding you up. It's an accessory. Like when we used to carry pocketbooks when we went places. Right. I've transitioned to the fanny pack. Look down, circle the hands to frame your right foot on the inside. Stay low to the ground and start to pivot. Pivot to the back of your mat. Left foot is forward towards the back of your mat. Back right leg is strong. Work out the alignment, right hand down, left arm open. So get out of your own way if you're like, this isn't what we normally do. I don't know what normal is. So grip the hips in, activate your back leg. And rather than feeling like you're leaning back with your torso, actually move your torso a little closer to your left thigh. Grip the hip in and twist as much as you can or back out. Connect to your breath and the feeling. Sit a little deeper into your front thighs. Let the shoulders slide down the back this morning. Grip your right hip in, your right thigh contracts, your left hip hugs in, two more breaths. Look down, hands frame. Pivot your, your right foot so it goes strong. Keep your left foot where it is. Bump your left arm on the top of your left thigh. Don't come up. Slide the right arm up or hand on your hip. Supported side angle here. Your arm is resting on your thigh. My back left foot is facing the back edge of your mat. You got it. Turn the bottom ribs. Grip the hip in. Left arm is very light. Top arm can reach straight up or can wrap forward. If the arm kind of gets stuck in front of your face, that's an indication that a shoulder is not quite ready for that. So just do a little less. And then just find your breath. Make sure your stance is wide enough. It's long enough. That looks good, Erica. The right leg is strong. If the arm is sliding forward, reach a little more. Anchor a little more. Stay with it. Notice if you're clenching or holding on or waiting for me to say time is up, we're moving on to the next thing. Just be here and let your mind slow down. Look down. You're like, yes, that finally. Circle both hands. Straighten the leg, walk through center. Good. In the center position here, come to your fingertips, bring your hands together, bring your weight forward, peel your right arm open. Stack the two shoulders. You kind of have to find the sweet spot. Nance, it may be helpful to have the block here. You can place it in the center, and that, that way the shoulder slides nicely into the socket. Weight moves forward. Hips do not move at all. It's a gentle offering. Back legs, back legs or the back of the legs are very strong. Look down. Right hand comes down. Peel open. Keep the weight forward. Activate your legs so you stay grounded. Move the energy and the weight forward. Use your breath to expand the pose. Look up a little with your eyes. Look down, both hands come down to the ground. Look to your right foot, pivot your right foot out. Turn your back toes in, grab onto your right shin somewhere. Left arm up, triangle pose, legs are straight. Soften behind your right knee, tighten up the stance if it didn't work out for you. Find something that works. 
I'm just gonna tell you right now, if you need a block, place the block to the outside of the calf. If you're not into the block here, you can be high up on the leg. Lower down is gonna be a little more intense. Hooking the big toe will be your most intense. I'm not going there. You'll have to take a crane to get me out. Good, take your bottom ribs, turn them. This is not a back bend. You should not feel this in your lower back. Grip your feet into the mat without feeling like you're clenching. Fire up the sides of your legs and your waist very long. Stay with the breath and the feeling. See if you can lighten it. Look down, stay in the inside of your right foot. Pivot, stay low, pivot the right foot. Pivot to the back of the mat, tighten up the stance, make sure your heel to heel or heel to arch. Grab onto the shin, block higher up, triangle facing the back of the mat. Back leg is strong, soften behind your left knee. Yeah. It's not yoga per perfect, it's yoga, it's a yoga practice. So you find different ways to kind of explore your breath, the feeling, integrate your muscles. Lots of space, guys, from your hip to your armpit. So if you're dumping down, remind yourself to lift up and use your oblique muscles. Stack the two shoulders, look up with your eyes. Stay with this. Feel your feet on the floor. Look down. Both hands circle. They're gonna walk on the inside, walk through center, stay with me, walk to the front. Walk the right foot over to the right, come up high on the ball of your back foot, come on your fingertips. You're setting up your feet for a low lunge. Sweep your arms back and hover, back leg strong. Grip the hip in. You can always drop the back knee if you'd like to do a little lesson here this morning. Hug the waist in, sweep your arms straight up and forward and up as you come into a crescent lunge. Yeah, soften behind your left knee so your hip points move forward. And then from here, fire up your back left leg so you know you're really working the glute and the hamstring. Sit deep into your front right thigh. Energetically reach up with your arms. Move your eyes up a little towards the ceiling without dropping your head back. Sit a little deeper. Little different guys today. Hands come down to frame your front foot. Let your left leg float up, only hip height. If you need to slide blocks underneath your hands, do this, do so. So it's a standing split, but your back leg is more like a warrior three. Let your head go, soften your shoulders. Draw your belly down to the front of your right thigh. Let your head, your jaw, your neck, everything go. Lift from the inner thigh, make sure you're not opening the hip. Now, stay with your right leg really strong, like a strong Tadasana leg. Turn your left toes out to a 45 degree angle, pause. Now take a giant step back and sit into warrior one as you come up. Yep, warrior one, sweep your arms out and up. Sit deep into your front right thigh. Your back foot is on a strong angle, about 45, 60 degree angle. Your right hip moves back, your left thigh and waist turns towards the front edge of your mat and your arms reach up. Sit a little deeper. Hands come down to frame your front foot. I want you here to step to a down dog. Step to a down dog, you haven't been here yet. Downward facing dog. From your down dog, glide your left foot forward into a low lunge, pause, back leg strong, arms reach back, grip the hips in, activate your back leg, put a lot of weight into your front left thigh, not into the joint of the knee. Yep. Ride the breath and come up high lunge, crescent lunge. Once you get up, sometimes we need to make a little tweak. So I like to take a little bend in my back right knee, just to remind me to move my hips forward and then activate the back right hamstring and glute. So squeeze it super tight and then fire it up. Then look forward with your eyes and settle in here. Sometimes when you start a practice and it's a little slower, you notice like how you need to slow down. Reach up a little more.
Hands come down to frame the front foot. If you can do this with the fingertips lining up with your left toes, that's great. If not, use blocks. Pop the right leg up like it's a warrior three. Keep the right thigh so it's parallel to the ground. Draw the torso down. Soften the shoulders. Let the head go. Blocks under one or both hands works tremendously well. Grip your left hip. Hug it in. Lift from the inner right thigh, but don't open the hip. Stay with the breath. Turn the right toes open just a little bit. Yeah, right toes turn open just a little bit to the right corner of the mat. Giant step back. Warrior one, come on up. Steer the right side of your body forward. Sit deep into the front left thigh. Reach up with your arms. Move your eyes up. Use the blade of your back right foot to secure the pose. That's where the strength of the posture comes from. These look great, everyone. Hands come down to frame your front foot. Step to a dog. When you get to down dog, work it out. Lift your hips up off your shoulders. Check out the alignment of your hands. Let your head go. Breathe your hips really far up off your shoulders in here this morning. And then roll forward to a plank. Stack your body nice and tight here. Mm -hmm. Good, so you haven't been to plank yet. It's kind of nice. Stack the body, grip the outer arms in. Move your eyes to the front skinny edge of your mat. Lower halfway to a chaturanga or drop your knees if you'd like to support this. Pull your belly in, re-straighten your arms to a plank, pause. Keep your weight moving forward, your eyes moving forward. Bend your elbows in half, chaturanga or supported chaturanga with your knees down. Fire up your thighs, straighten your arms, plank. Contract the thighs, lower halfway, draw the belly in, chaturanga, pause. Pull the chest and the heart through for an up dog. Activate the tops of the feet like they were in that first child's pose with the feet down. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Look where you wanna go. Step or float your feet to the top. Long spine on the inhale, breath. Exhale, fold over yourself. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag your hands to prayer at heart. Drop your arms. Few support is uh, amended sun A's. Slide the arms up, look up with your eyes. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. If your hands don't make it to the ground, have them on your shins. Long spine on the inhale, weight stays forward. Exhale, fold again. Root to rise, come up, anchor. Drag it to heart center, drop your arms. So just movement and breath, arms up, look up. Dive again over bent knees. Come to the fingertips, long spine. Let the shoulders draw down the back. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Hands to prayer at heart. Drop your arms. Keep moving. Arms up, look up. Dive again over bent knees. Come to the fingertips, long spine. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come up. Energetically reach up. Drag the hands to prayer. Drop your arms. Here we go. Slide the arms up. Now sit into chair pose, sit deep. Also known as thunderbolt. Mm -hmm. Move the weight back into your heels, everyone. Yeah, a lot of times we like to hang out in the front balls of our feet. Let the thighs drop back, move the seat back, lift the waist. Sit a little deeper. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Come to the fingertips, long spine. You can step, step, you can float at this point through a vinyasa or just find your way to a down dog if you're not into all the push-ups and stuff. Upward facing, hips up and back, downward facing. Right foot lands, back foot on a strong angle warrior one. If you're nursing an injury, you prefer crescent lunge, that is an awesome option. Hands come down, vinyasa or right to a dog, you'd pick. Up dog, hips up and back down dog. Looks good, Kristen, left foot forward, back foot strong. Warrior one, take your time. Hands come down through a vinyasa or not. Meet me in a downward facing dog and pause there. Down dog, press firm through your hands. 
Feel the back side of your body open. Now look forward where you want to go. Step or float your feet to the top. Long spine on the inhale breath. Exhale, fold. Sit again into a chair. Weight moves into your heels. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Let's just move it here. Long spine to prepare. Exhale your breath, step, step, or float through your vinyasa. You can just go plank to a chaturanga if you prefer. Up dog. Hips up and back down dog. Right foot lands, back foot strong, warrior one. So just keep it moving for yourself so you can warm up. Hands come down, plank, vinyasa. Nice work, not too fast, not too slow. Left foot forward, back foot strong, warrior one. Hands come down, plank position. Bend your elbows in half. Do it slow enough so you can feel up dog. Hips up and back, downward facing dog. Leave it behind. Each one hopefully gets better. I've been telling myself that for 20 years. Look where you want to go. Step or float, feet to the top. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold. Sit again into chair, move the weight back into your heels. So when you forward fold, go ahead, do it now. Do it over bent knees, forward fold, and then straighten the legs. Long spine on the inhale, breath, plant your palms, give yourself some space. Step, step, or float through your vinyasa. From your down dog, step your right foot forward, turn your back foot strong, warrior one. Hands come down, plank position. Bend your elbows in half for that chaturanga, upward facing, hips up and back, downward facing. Left foot forward, keep moving. Back foot strong, warrior one. Plank position, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, new breath. Downward facing dog is where we meet. Wherever you are, you meet us there. Deep breath in. Exhale it all out. Look where you want to go. Step or float, feet to the top. Long spine on the inhale breath. Exhale, fold. One more, sit again into a chair, weight moves into your heels. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Come to the fingertips, long spine, step, step, or float through a vinyasa, it's up to you. When you get to your down dog, glide your right foot forward, turn your back foot strong, warrior one. Everyone looks so happy in their little squares. Yeah, hands to the floor, chaturanga. Upward facing dog. Hips up and back, downward facing, left foot forward, back foot strong, warrior one. Hands to the floor, vinyasa. Upward facing, point the tops of the feet into the mat. Hips up and back, downward facing dog, let it go. Take a deep breath in. Take a strong exhale breath out. Roll forward to a plank and pause. So when you're in plank position, it's really important that you lengthen your tailbone. Yeah, so you wanna feel like you're moving that energy front and back. Take your right knee towards your right tricep, just in the general direction. It might actually not make it there, but just, just kind of slide it that way. Keep looking forward. Back leg strong, arms straight up and down. Keep your eyes forward, hug the knee straight in. Just move it to the center line of your body. You don't need to round, just hug it in. Draw it a little closer, feel the hands press more into the mat. With your eyes still looking forward, land your right foot forward into a low lunge and pause. Good time to use a block, any direction that works for you. Slide it out off the edge of your right baby toe and you're gonna float up into a half moon. So working on some balance here early in the practice. So the block goes kind of off the edge of the right baby toe, left hand can be on your hip, left arm can slide up towards the sky, you can always go to the wall. Right leg is like Tadasana, so you really wanna press firm through that right foot and hip and keep it moving forward. Stack the two shoulders, look up with your eyes. 
and spark up your left toes. If you'd like to add a chopasana today, you're welcome to do so. You can bend at your knee crease, grab your ankle. The kick should go behind you, not up towards the ceiling. This is optional. I'm just in the regular half moon here, but you're welcome to add the bind. Turn your bottom ribs, whatever you've chosen to do, towards the sky, towards the ceiling. And then maybe lighten your right hand. Come to four fingers or three fingers, two fingers. Maybe the bottom hand comes to a prayer. And if you fall, welcome to yoga. If you took a bind, just release into a regular half moon. Meet us here. Keep flexing your left toes pretty strong. Right foot's gonna stay just as it is. You're gonna take a giant step back into a warrior two. Stay close to the floor and do it. Set up your feet and then circle open. Warrior two. It's not always the most graceful transitions. We just do our best. Line up your feet and then they're not all over the place. Front foot and back foot somewhat on the same line of energy. Torso straight up and down and arms energetically reaching across your body. And then just take a few moments to settle in here. Inner right thigh turning. Mine turns towards the fireplace. I know I'm set up and I'm not in my knee joint. Back leg strong and then close your eyes. Lengthen your tailbone down like you're in a squat pose. Feel your feet on the floor. Run a lot of energy through your torso. Embrace the feeling. Powerful pose. Enjoy it. Sit deeper. Keeping the shape of the lower half of the body, don't move that at all. Take your right palm, flip it up towards the sky, and gently float your right arm up and back for a reverse warrior. So this pose is awfully sometimes done incorrectly. It is not a back bend. It is a side body offering. You are not at all dumping into your low back. Very important. Keep driving the right heel into the mat. Keep the shape of the right leg. Float your right hand to the inside of your right foot. Go with a block, two blocks, seven blocks, whatever you need. I like to tempt the fingertips just because I get in the habit of going into the wrist otherwise. Lean back a little into the inside of your right leg and slide the left arm up. So if you prefer the modified version that we did before, you can always opt for that. Grip your right hip underneath you. Turn the bottom ribs. And then with your left arm, maybe you want to slide it to your hip. Maybe you want to wrap it around and grab the inner part of your thigh. Half bind. If you feel bold, you can go for a full bind, but just make sure the breath stays with you. Lean back just a little bit, and then look over your left shoulder. Turn your ribs from right to left. Yeah, that's a good one. Stay with your breath and the feeling. Grip the right hip underneath you. I know everyone's feeling something here. Sit a little deeper. Unravel your left arm. Feel the feet supporting you. Pull up warrior two. Never gets old. Drive the feet into the mat. Lengthen the waist and the tailbone down towards the mat. Look forward. Circle the hands to frame your front foot. Side plank Vashi Sasana on the left hand. I'm gonna grab my right ankle. I'm gonna slide my right foot into a tree pose, but this is optional. Any variation of side plank that you feel that you can maintain. Lift the bottom hip. Your left arm is slightly in front of you, like an inch. Right arm up or right arm can wrap forward. Lift your bottom hip. Spark up your toes if you're in the regular variation. Lift a little higher. If the arm wrap forward, reach it straight up. Look down with your eyes. Plank through a vinyasa. You can also just go to a dog. Totally fine. Take a downward facing dog, leave it behind. When you get back to that down dog, roll forward to a plank. Stack your body here, alignment first always. Left knee towards left tricep. This can also be done with the knee down, the right knee down if you need to support it. Keep looking forward. 
Feel your arms, they're strong and they're straight. They're pressing firm into the mat. Keep hugging in, drag the knee to the center. To the center, yeah. Hug a little tighter, a little closer. Look forward with your eyes, land your left foot forward, low lunge, pause. Reach for that block out in front of you and float half moon. Stay close to the floor, it helps a lot. So the block is directly underneath the shoulder. The left foot is driving forward. The hip is hugging in and you're stacking your two hips. Right arm reaching up towards the sky. Maybe opting for the wall. Spark up your right toes. Add in that little bind if you took it on the other side. You can bend at your knee crease, grab the ankle and practice kicking behind you. Not up towards the ceiling, behind you. Take the bottom ribs wherever you are and turn them. And then last little bit, see if you can lighten the load of that bottom hand. Right. Maybe we're relying on it a little too much. Come back to your breath and if you fall, you try again. If you took the bind, just start to slowly release out into a regular half moon. Stay with your breath. Focus strong on your left leg. It's gonna stay forward and your hip is gonna grip in. Stay close to the floor, take a giant step back. Warrior two. So come up into warrior two right here. Set up your feet. Sometimes they're like all over the place. Yeah, if you notice your right foot is over there and your left foot is over there, set it up so on the same line of energy. Take a few moments here to align yourself. Sit deep into your front thigh. Feel your waist stay long. Breathe your chest open. Close your eyes and hold five breaths. Yeah, so Erica, you can even play with like your dristy and that's your focus. So like for years, everyone's like, look forward, look forward. Well, I find when you look forward, you end up moving forward. So play with where you look, maybe even look to the back arm and it may not work, but we can at least try. Lengthen the tailbone, good. Turn up the inner part of the thigh. You almost got it, almost there. Keep the shape of your legs. Flip the left palm, reverse the torso, reverse warrior. Keep driving that left heel into the mat. Back leg strong, sit deep into your front thigh. Hip point to fingertips, you're getting a lot of space. Keep that energetic flow here. Float the left hand to the instep of the foot. Use a block or two blocks. Right arm reaches up to start. Lean back a little. If you need to bump your arm onto the top of the thigh and support this, do that. Grip your hip in. And then maybe your right hand comes to your hip or you can slide it around and reach for the inner thigh for the half bind or full bind if you took it on the other side. Lean back a little bit right here and then look over your right shoulder. What really helps in this pose is you focus on your right leg. Yeah, because your right leg is strong and it's straight. So use that to press more and then you may find a little more space to sit into your front thigh. And then with that space, you have a drop more room to twist open. Two more. Unravel the right arm. Feel the feet, feel the leg strength. Pull yourself up into warrior two, take the bounce out of the equation. Now you can look forward with your eyes. Circle the hands to frame your front foot. Take your right hand, lean onto it. I take my left ankle and I kind of grab it and I place it to the inside of that leg somewhere for a side plank with a tree. This is optional. Supported side plank is available. Regular side plank. You could just think about side plank. Yeah. Top arm reaches up or it can come forward. So there's no yoga pure pressure. You do what your body needs. Lift from your bottom hip, make sure you're not opening that hip. A little bit more. If you wrapped your arm forward, slide it straight up, look down, 
plank position. When you get to plank, decide what you need, vinyasa or not. Meet me in a downward facing dog, hips up and back. Nice work. Look where you want to go. Step or float your feet to the top. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold over yourself. Bring your hands on your hips. Pull yourself up to stand. Good. Cross your right ankle over the front of your left thigh, just like this. Make the figure four. Flex your right foot strong. Arms reach straight up towards the sky. And with your legs set up here, start to move your seat back and lower into a chair. Yeah. I actually sometimes need to use my hands to kind of get it situated, but hug the outer hips in and move your right hip back. Reach up with your arms. Good. So for today, you're going to reach all the way forward. You're going to hinge forward, 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 forward. Pause. Mm -hmm. Bring your hands to a prayer. Hook the back of your triceps in front of your shin to get down there more. Flex your foot. Yes, yeah, so the back of my triceps are in front of my shin and my hands are in a prayer. You can also drop your hands down to blocks. You can fly here if you want. If not, we're just gonna breathe and hold. Keep moving your seat back. Keep bending into your standing left leg. Draw your belly in and look forward with your eyes. Almost think about creating a little bit of an up dog. You feel that? Looks good, guys. Stay with it. So slide your arms back forward. Pull your torso back up. Press to stand. Lower your right foot down or fall out. Stand up tall. Let's try the other side. Right leg strong. If you switched up the leg, do the side you didn't do. Cross the left ankle. Flex the foot strong. Reach the arms up. Start to move your seat back. If you find you need a little self-adjustment, it's there for you. Start with the arms straight up and down. Move the energy back into your right heel. Swing your left hip back. And then start to move your arms forward. Pause. So it's like chair. Hands to prayer. You're going to hook the back of the triceps in front of your shin and flex your foot really, really strong. If you feel you want to go into a flying version of this, the hands will drop down to the ground and you can practice flying pigeon. If not, just stay with this. Keep gripping the hips in. Yeah, Dara, you can go for it. If you want to fly, yeah, fly. Keep bending into that standing leg a little longer. It's almost like a little up dog in your chest. Slide the arms forward. Keep the legs strong. Lift the arms up. Press to stand. Lower the feet down. Stand up tall at the top of your mat. Separate your feet hips with distance from me. Slide your left leg back about three feet. Yeah. Walk your right foot over to the right. Right hand on your hip. Left arm extends up. Go long and strong with the back left leg and the left arm. Come forward halfway. Use your right hand to steer the hip back and then come the rest of the way down into a twisting triangle. So if you don't have a block today, your hand can rest on the front of your shin. You can practice this pressing your hand into your shin with your arm straight. Block, find a sweet spot, instep a foot, move the hips back, and then slide your right arm up. Grip your hips underneath you, yep. And then breathe into your upper register, up into your upper chest. Open up your throat and your neck. Look up with your eyes. Use the strength of your back left leg. Press it firm into the mat. So last little bit. Rather than, rather than feeling like you're leaning back, move your torso just an inch or two closer to your right leg and then twist there. Look down, take both hands to frame your front foot. Just move your block to the side, hands to your hips. At the same time, pull yourself back up and keep the legs straight the way that they are. Arms are gonna reach forward like you're handing a tray of something to someone. Wrap your left arm underneath your right arm. Bend into your front right leg. Sometimes this isn't so suave, but we'll try. Wrap the left leg around for eagle standing on your right leg. Move your weight into your heel. So same alignment as ankle to knee that we just took. 
Lift your elbows up. Steer your left hip back, your right hip forward, and squeeze tight. Look forward, guys. Stay with it. Keep the legs squeezing really, really tight. Don't change that. Just unravel your arms. Just unravel your arms. So you're an eagle legs and arms straight up and down like a chair. Unravel your left leg next to your right and sit into a deep chair. Slide the hands to prayer at heart. Inhale the breath, move the weight back into your heels. Hook the elbow and turn to the right. When you hook and twist, make sure your whole body doesn't go with you. Your knees stay together, your feet stay together. Open up your arms if you want a little bit more here. Drop down into the pose, twist open. Open up your arms if you want, yeah. Squeeze the weight into your heels. Keep the legs really, really strong. Start to move your waist forward. Lift your arms up, chair pose. Dig down, everyone. Sit a little deeper. Press up to stand. Drag your hands to prayer. Separate your feet to their hips with distance. I find this helps. Bring your hands to your hips. Slide your right leg back about three feet. Keep your hands on your hips. Left hand on your hip. Right arm goes long and strong. Back leg is the power of the pose. Come halfway down, pause. Use your left hand to like literally move your hip back and then come the rest of the way down. Hand either somewhere on the front of your shin or to a block for twisting triangle. This is one of those poses. It's a great posture. You have to be very prepped to be in it. We've done a good job. Steer your hips back, legs are strong, a little bend in your front knee. Waist is long, and then look up. So what a lot of people start to do in this pose, what I've noticed is they start to lean back and then they start to kind of go into their lower lumbar. Take your torso and move it just a little bit closer to your front leg. Try that. Yeah, and then press more through your back leg. You may find you can drop the block down. Yeah, and then twist open. Look up with your eyes. Press firm through your feet. Nice, Tracy. Breathe a little bit more intently into your body and see where you can find some wiggle room. Two more. Look down, place both hands to frame your front foot, pause. At the same time, hands to your hips, pull yourself back up, don't move your legs. Bring your arms straight forward, fire up the sides of your triceps, wrap your right arm underneath your left, lift your elbows up, then bend into your front thigh, wrap your right thigh around, eagle standing on your left leg. Squeeze your legs tight. The weight should be in your standing left heel and your legs are creating a shape of a chair. Yeah, right hip back, left hip forward, elbows lift. Squeeze nice and tight. Look down the center line of your body. Sit deeper. More breath. Nothing will happen if you fall, it's okay. Keep the shape of the lower half of the body, just unwrap your arms, just do that much. A little more energy through your triceps, through your fingertips. Unravel your legs and take yourself into a deep chair. Bring your hands to prayer. Inhale that breath. Stay with it. Hook the elbow. Turn the other way to the left. Check in with your legs, your knees. Make sure they're not sliding past each other. Nice and even. Open up your arms if you want more. Or just stay as you are. Right here, guys, this is where the good stuff happens. Last two breaths. Keep the strong legs, chair pose. Press all the way up to stand, drag your hands to prayer. Good, if you have a block, take it, place it at like a third of the way up the mat, or maybe close to the top of the mat. Good, right here, yeah, I practiced this the other day. So find a sweet spot for yourself because you're gonna stand on your block. If you don't have a block, you can do this without a block. Yeah, because we're gonna go into a handstand prep. 
First do this. So your heels are lifted up off the mat. I'm not on the mat. My toes are on the mat. Good. Bring your arms up, flex your palms. Lengthen your tailbone and find balance here because your heels are not on the block. Yeah, your balls of your feet are on the block. Your toes may even be lifted off the block because the block's going this long, the fat direction. Press the palms. Now bring your arms back a little further. Keep your neck nice and neutral. Good, bring your hands to your hips. Bend your knees and start to fold forward. Bring your hands down to the ground. Work it out with yourself here. You're gonna come high on your tippy toes on the block. If you don't have a block, I will demonstrate. High on your tippy toes, hands press down. Perfect, let me see how you're all doing. The idea is to get your hips over your shoulders, fire up the sides of your triceps, tighten it up. Good, Kristen, if you feel like the block is making it like eh, not so great, just step down and just tighten it. It's like a tight forward fold, high on your tippy toes. Straighten your legs though and straighten your arms. There you go. Now ank up onto your to tippy toes, really high heels. We don't know what those are either. Nice, Jules, perfect. Fire up the sides of your arms. Now draw the pit of your belly in and look forward just a little bit. Perfect. Three more breaths. Nice, Kristen, you can, put, you can lift one leg maybe. Nice, Dara. Yep. Yep, keep growing. Now maybe lower the right leg and lift the left leg. Good, nice, Erica, lower the left leg. Step back, downward facing dog. So those are a hell of a lot better than hopping around on your mat and potentially hurting yourself. That's how we get strong. Roll forward to plank. Stay with the flow, we're almost done. Bend your elbows in half, chaturanga. Pull yourself through an up dog. Recurl the toes, bend your elbows, chaturanga. If you don't wanna do it, just pretend like you didn't hear me. Straighten your arms, plank position. Hips up and back, downward facing. Some of us are very familiar with that behavior. Glide your right foot forward, crescent lunge. Yep, crescent lunge. Drag your hands to prayer, you know what's coming. Inhale your breath, try and move on the exhale breath. Hook the elbow and turn to the right. Listen, if you wanna back out, drop the knee. This is just as good. Hand can also go to the instep and you can take just an easy twist. So, so same things, it's a feeling like you're leaning back, but you also wanna kinda of draw your ribs a little closer to the front of your right thigh so you can get in there. Activate your back leg. Twist open. Stay with it, a little longer. Activate that back leg more. Right out the exhale breath as you take it to the final few moments of this. Dig your right heel into the mat, look up. Hands to the floor, step right back to plank. Bend your elbows in half to a chaturanga. Pull yourself through a nice upward facing. Add in another chaturanga if you want, lengthen your tailbone, plank position, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Land your left foot forward, crescent lunge on the left side. Opt out by dropping your back knee if you'd like. Hands to prayer at heart. Inhale that breath, hook the elbow, take it to the left. The same thing with this pose, we really wanna take the round out of our backs, ideally. So it's a feeling like you're leaning back, but you kinda of wanna draw your ribs closer to the front of your thigh. And it's gonna help you get in there. Open up your arms if you want more. Bend deeper into your front thigh, feel the weight in your heel, and breathe. Two more. Look down, place both hands to the floor. So go ahead and walk your left foot to the center of your mat. Swing your right knee right next to your left ankle. Come down and sit. This is Ardha Matsandrasana seated spine twist. Yeah. 
Make sure you're not sitting on your heel. Your both butt cheeks are down. Left hand goes behind you. You can hook the elbow around the front of the thigh or hook the elbow to the outside of the thigh. Inhale the breath. Exhale, look over the shoulder and twist. Make sure that your left foot stays down. It's not popping up, as is your knee. It's all staying rooted and grounded. And your spine is moving straight up and down as you look over your shoulder. Yep. Come through center. Just switch the legs for me. Nothing fancy about this. Hand behind you, hook the elbow, twist to the right. Hook the elbow in there. You can also just give the leg a little squeeze. Keep the right foot flat and make sure you're not sitting on your left heel. Good, inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, look over the shoulder and twist. Come to center, unravel your legs, take your feet flat to the floor, slide the palms flat, you know what's coming. Supported bridge. With your hands down today, guys, bend your knees in half like a table. Flex your feet and focus on your torso staying really elongated and long, yeah. Press the hands down. If the hands don't quite make it to the ground, you can tense the fingertips, you can bring blocks underneath your hands, but use your hands, firm up the sides of your triceps, draw your belly in. Keeping your hands down, find Ardha Navasana, that's low boat. So my low boat looks like this, my feet are flexed. I'm scooping out my belly, my lower back is on the mat and my neck is not taking any pressure and looking straight up. Legs can also be straight up and down to a 90 degree angle if you like less intensity. Just as good. Keep the hands firm. Navasana boat, keep your hands on the ground. Press with more energy through your hands. You feel that? Grip your outer arms and draw the thighs closer towards the navel. Ardha Navasana, low boat, find something that works. More breath, more breath, more feeling. Navasana, hands down. Draw the thighs closer to you, reach the arms forward. Yeah, lift up more. Try this, flex your palms, press them forward. Lift up a little bit more. Cross your ankles with those flex hands. Use that to press yourself, step it back or float back through a vinyasa. The up dog should feel good if you're taking it because that was some core work. Hips up and back downward facing. Right knee forward, half pigeon right here. You worked hard for it, so let's go for it. So stay checked in. Sometimes at the end of the practice, I know I have a hard time with this too. I kind of like start thinking about everything else, but be here for the last five, six minutes of the class. Let your head go and just melt. Nice, smooth, slow breaths through the back of your throat. Downward facing dog, slide your left leg forward, half pigeon, just try and stay in the meditation and move right into it. Right thigh down, right top of the foot down, and always go onto your back as well and thread the needle. Reminding you that you should never feel any discomfort in your knee. Most of us feel it through our piriformis, which is the back outer hip. Let the head go.
Start to come up nice and slow. Stay in the meditation. Just move slowly. Roll onto the left side. Swing the legs forward. Lay down on your back. We'll set up for three back bends here. Kind of clean up shop. Lay down. Bring your block with you if you know you need it for supported bridge. Good. Make sure the fingertips skim the backs of your heels. This is proper alignment, feet or hips width. Lift the tailbone up and you can either reach for the block and make it more passive and restorative or the more traditional ways to clasp the hands and shimmy the shoulders underneath. Anchor the feet. The lift should come from the tailbone to the backs of the knees and your knees should not wing out. Keep the neck nice and neutral and look up. Good, exhale the breath, lower down. Take a breath in, take a breath out. Do it again, repeat. If you like block, no block with hands clasped, or you'd like to move on to full wheel, flip your palms, bring your chin to your chest. Take a giant breath in. And on your exhale breath, try and lift yourself up. Yes, yeah, so I like the block with the hands clasped around the block. I find I can really get the back bend there. Some of us like legs up the wall type thing. Okay, bring your feet arc much closer in and your knees closer together. Try it again. If you get stuck, I'll get your kid from school. <laughs> yeah. Exhale the breath, come down. Take a breath in. If you're on a block, you just want to stay. Stay a little longer. One more. Let's give it our best shot here. Flip the palms, chin to chest. Giant breath in. Exhale that breath. And here we go. Lift yourself up. Even if it's for a breath or two, or maybe you're on a block and you want to independently lift one leg and maybe lower that and lift the other leg. Yeah, just keeping your energy moving here. Good, exhale your breath, start to lower. If your legs are up, bend your knees, take your feet back to the floor and lower yourself down nice and slowly. One full squeeze of your knees in towards your chest, Reach for the outer blades of your feet and find your way into a very brief, happy baby. Lengthen your tailbone. Yeah, lengthen your tailbone down. Flex the feet really strong and draw the back of the shoulders into the mat with your neck nice and neutral. Hug the knees in and set up for rest, Shavasana. Legs go straight out. Feet turn out, make yourself comfortable here. A pillow, a blanket, your bathrobe, anything goes. Set yourself up to just rest for the next minute or two. Take a deep breath in through your nose. A loud, complete exhale breath out. If you need to stay longer, you have the time to stay longer. Just shut off the computer and do that. If not, arms reach up over the top of the head and start to move slowly, hug the knees to the chest, give them a big squeeze in and bring yourself up to a seated position in your own time. And as you sit up in this final moments of the practice, bring the hands to the prayer, to the prayer. Bow your head for a moment. So taking the time for yourself to do this is so important. Thank yourselves for that. Lift your head, open your eyes. With gratitude always, namaste. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I hope to add a class next week over Thanksgiving because we'll be here doing nothing. So join me then, I'll, I'll be in touch. <laughs>